I want you guys to go ahead and comment below how frequently you eat processed foods. We're trying out a new hairstyle today. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you maybe already know, but I'll have Jason throw up here a little inspiration or who wore it better with the hairstyle. You guys already know from today's title, but this is a topic I've wanted to do a video on for such a long time. But one of you actually reached out to me earlier this week. I was posting on my Instagram stories. I do share a lot of my own like meal prep and like what I'm eating and things like that. If you want more behind the scenes of a dietitian and what she eats, you guys can follow me over there. But I happen to share a healthy choice frozen meal that I was eating. And anytime I share that kind of stuff, I always get a few people in my DMs kind of asking me to discuss this a bit further and what my take is on, you know, frozen foods, but more generally speaking, processed foods and how harmful are they for our health and to what degree do we really need to be concerned with processed foods? I think commonly when we talk about processed foods, like even my mind goes to fast food, pizza, cakes, things like that, right? But that is not all that is encompassed by processed food. The USDA defines processed foods by any raw agricultural commodity that's been subject to washing, cleaning, milling, cutting, chopping, heating, pasteurizing, blanching, cooking, canning, freezing, drying, dehydrating, mixing, packaging, or other procedures that alter the food from its natural state. Preservatives, flavors, nutrients, and other food additives. We talked about food additives well, not really a food additive, but a food chemical that we sometimes see called phthalates in last week's video. So if you guys haven't checked that out, I would suggest go watching that video first. So food additives or substances approved for use in food products such as salt, sugars, and fats. So by definition, most times we engage in any kind of food prep of any sort, we're in fact processing that food. The more we start kind of demonizing certain terms and certain food groups, it really does unfortunately make our relationship with food worse and oftentimes can impact our health negatively. So while I want you guys to be educated on these terms, I want you to still be careful about how you're viewing the foods that you choose or maybe the judgments you're throwing at other people in regards to the food that they choose. So when we think about something that's totally unprocessed, right? If we say, in a perfect world, and there's some people out there that preach this, in a perfect world, you are gonna eat everything that is 100% unprocessed. So if you consider that definition from USDA, we are really gonna have to be someone who is, is really living off the land on our own and maybe doing our own farming, gardening, um, really just eating 100% whole foods that haven't been altered by any means. They are just in their natural state. So when you think about going to the grocery store, if you're someone that maybe isn't living off your own land, you're going to the grocery store, or you're going to the market, picking things up, to be choosing 100% whole foods in its natural state, you're gonna be focusing primarily in the you know, produce section, a little bit in the meat section too, because something like raw chicken, um, I would still argue is somewhat processed because you're not sitting there buying a whole chicken, right? If you're buying raw chicken breast, those have been processed by some means, removing other items from that chicken to give you a package of chicken breasts, right? So how far are we taking the term processed in regards to what we're go going to maybe limit or restrict from our diet? So let's see what the American Academy of Nutrition and dietetics has to say about this. That is the academy that accredits all registered dietitians. So I always like to see what their thought process is on some of these topics. We've got unprocessed foods, but we also want to lump in there the minimally processed foods too. So minimally processed foods are going to be things such as bagged vegetables, things like bagged spinach, cut up vegetables, roasted nuts. Those are prepped, but they're prepped from a convenience standpoint. So they're kind of maybe eliminating some of the things you wouldn't eat from the rest of the food product and they're prepping it in a ready to go package for you. So it's still essentially a whole food if you're sitting there eating some baby spinach, but it's technically been processed, right? Because it's been put into a bag, it's been cleaned, it's been washed, placed into a bag 
for you ready to eat. We also have foods that are processed more so at their peak of ripeness. So frozen foods, for instance, those are usually flash frozen at their peak of ripeness. So they still have a ton of nutritional quality, even though they're technically processed, they're frozen. Yeah, they're not fresh, but you're still getting a great source of nutrition from fresh. Minimally processed foods, think about it more so where the nutritional content is still pretty much intact. There may be some modification, like I mentioned the example of frozen foods, uh, but for the most part, the nutritional components there have not changed and there really hasn't been anything added to it. This would also include things like crushing it, freezing it, drying it sometimes. Um, things like carrots, apples, raw chicken, that would be minimally processed. Like I said, it's not a whole food, it's processed because you've changed the makeup of it, but there really hasn't been any change to the actual nutritional contents of it. When we process foods, we're essentially altering that food by adding ingredients to it. And again, it's not always bad, all right? Don't, don't jump over there yet. It's not always bad, but sometimes we are adding ingredients to it to either alter the flavor, to make it taste better. Sometimes it is to preserve it a bit more. When we, th when we think about things like canned goods, canned tomatoes, corn, things like that, you're canning it, adding a little bit of salt to it that helps preserve it and essentially help, help the shelf life. Even though the nutritional content isn't changed a ton, there is some modifications made there. Other examples are things like even our breads and breakfast cereals. I don't think people tend to go, oh, that's such a processed item, but essentially it is. Like most stuff is processed, but it's not always a bad thing. So things like our breakfast cereals and breads, they're processed, but they're also fortified oftentimes um, with additional nutritional ingredients in there to make it a bit more robust. Things that we don't always get enough of in our diet, sometimes having the fortified and certain items can be a good thing to make sure that we're getting essentially all that we need throughout our diet. Then we get into the term ultra processed, right? I don't know, have you guys heard the term ultra processed versus processed? I'd love to know if you have heard that or not before because I feel like I hadn't heard a lot of people use that term. And then recently I've more so been hearing people take it that next level to classify things as ultra processed. But it actually is a true term. This was coined 10 years ago by a PhD MD named Carlos Montero. He asserted that a food's degree of processing, not only its nutrient profile should be examined when determining it determining its healthfulness, which I agree with. So Dr. Carlos states ultra processed foods, which may include soft drinks, sweet or savory packaged snacks, typically are defined as those consisting mostly or entirely of additives and substances derived from foods that have undergone several sequences of processing. Uh, also stated recent evidence links ultra processed foods to poor diet quality, increased risk of a variety of diseases and adverse health outcomes, which we are gonna dive into that a bit more here. Ultra processed foods therefore end up being a lot of items such as frozen meals. Although I don't think you can throw all frozen meals into one classification nowadays, maybe like 10, 15 years ago, right? Like there wasn't as much on the market, but there is just so much more now in terms of frozen meals and really what is encompassed in there. But frozen meals still meets the list for an ultra processed item. Things like fast foods, things like hot dogs, things like uh, deli meats, processed cakes, cookies, packaged goodies like that. Before jumping into some of the associated health outcomes with a higher processed diet, I want you guys to go ahead and comment below how frequently you eat processed foods. Now keep in mind, I want you to kind of give me a little story too, if you will, because as I mentioned, almost everything's processed, right? It's, oh, it's really, really hard. And I would never, even as a dietitian, expect you or anyone else to have a hundred percent unprocessed diet. It, it's very, very challenging. It's very difficult and it's not always feasible for some people as well. But I want you to comment below how frequently you eat processed foods, whether it fall into the you know, process category or ultra process category. Just kind of think about it. How frequently do you do it? I know for me, I eat processed foods on a daily basis. No shame, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I don't. I do have processed foods in my diet and I am thankful for it. Honestly, I feel like 
I am pretty good about eating whole foods, but there's also a lot of times where processed foods or minimally processed, but some of the processed foods really come in handy for me uh, to make sure that I'm eating things like fruits and vegetables. I do dabble into the processed fruits and vegetables at times or frozen meals like I brought up earlier. And sometimes that's just a better option than no option or going the ultra processed route where maybe you find yourself at fast food as well. So sometimes you have to kind of pick and choose the lesser of two evils. And I'm also curious curious, do you guys agree with me? Do you think it is unrealistic to not eat anything processed? Let me know. I am always here for open opinions. You guys don't always have to agree with me. I truly enjoy hearing your perspective on things, even if they maybe differ than my stance on things. I personally feel like when I work with clients, I or for any of my dietitians that watch me as well, you know, my focus isn't to take someone's diet and make it 100% minimally processed to unprocessed. I wanna help people get rid of that all or nothing mindset with this stuff where I want you to be aware of what's super processed or ultra processed, I guess is the correct term. And more so just kind of making those small changes. Where can you maybe make some swaps to have less processed foods within your diet and understand that it's okay and it's expected that you're not gonna have 100% unprocessed diet. So I wanna get into some of the research now. First one being a study published. Um, I'm gonna pull up some of the journal information for you as well, limitations of any study as well. So there are limitations within each of these studies. A lot of times what's hard about diet and doing studies that are cause and effect and 100% this causes this and you will have this effect. It's really hard with diet related stuff because there's so much variability within each individual that's maybe part of the study that you can't account for or control for. And then also I find a lot of these studies when it comes to food consumption and looking at long-term health outcomes, a lot of what researchers have to rely on are food reporting and the reliability of food reporting. And we know people are poor historians and don't always honestly report what they're consuming. So I just like to mention that with any research studies you're looking at, you know, just kind of have that mindset as well. There's limitations. Don't ever just read one study and think that's the end all be all. That's why it's always good to look at meta analysis where they look at the research that's been done over a long period of time and kind of come up with conclusions. So that's just my little study note. But the first study published showed that ultra processed foods are the main source nearly 60% of calories eaten in the US and contribute almost 90% of the energy we get from added sugars. So that's kind of an astonishing amount when you think about it. You know, when we talk about where the majority of our diet is coming from, that's nearly 60% coming from ultra processed, right? We're not talking about the minimally processed, your packaged fruits and veggies, things like that. We're talking the ultra processed foods. That's over half of our diet essentially coming from those foods. So it's kind of interesting to think about that. And then I start thinking about where, where I fall in line with those percentages, right? Um, we still hear, I feel like in nutrition, the term, or maybe you've heard it before, like the 80-20 rule. I hear a lot of people like, you know, live by that rule or try to practice that rule. It's not really a rule necessarily. It's more so a guideline I've seen kind of created. Uh, more so, I think, after clean eating came about where people tried to make sure 80% of their diet is more so whole foods, minimally processed, whereas the other 20% come from not so nutritionally robust foods, some of your higher processed foods, essentially. So that's something that I hear people talk about quite a bit. Again, it's just a guideline some people discuss, and I don't think you really need to get yourself bogged down in percentage one way or the other, whether it's the 80-20 rule or 60% of your diet. I just want you guys to be less focused on you know, the number or fitting into a label and just being more mindful of the foods you're choosing and why. Are there some better options you could make to maybe swap out some of those ultra processed foods for less processed foods? Something to think about. Now, in terms of it actually affecting our health, this is what we need to know. What do you guys think? I think most of us are going to easily say absolutely, like there's nothing good for our health that can come from 
processing foods, right? Um, a recent study published in Cell Metabolism, this was actually a really cool study, but again, huge limitation of this study. There was only 20 participants. So unfortunately, a lot more research is needed. Um, but this study involved 20 healthy, you know, relatively healthy, overweight adults staying at a medical facility. So they had them in two different groups um, eating an unprocessed diet for 14 days. Well, they had one group eating unprocessed, one group eating ultra processed. So during each diet phase, the study subjects were presented with three daily meals and they were instructed to consume as much or as little as desired. It was totally up to the participant. And up to 60 minutes was allocated as well for them to consume each meal and or snack available throughout the day. They made sure that the meals were matched across the board, whether they were in the unprocessed group or the ultra processed group. They ensured that they were basically offered the same amount of total calories, carbohydrates, protein, things like that. Um, so the big difference there was the source of calories. It wasn't like the ultra processed group was being offered more calories, which you would kind of think, um, but they made sure it was equitable both ways in terms of calories. Interestingly enough, what they found with the subjects that were provided with the ultra processed foods is that they ended up eating on average 500 calories more than the group that was offered unprocessed foods. They also noted two body weight changes were correlated with diet differences in energy intake, which I guess you would assume as well. If the group was eating 500 more calories, they were probably gonna be the group to gain more weight during that two week time period. Keeping in mind, this study was done in a clinical setting. So I think we would need this study to kind of open up a bit more to be more realistic with us in our natural habitat and how we would eat comparative to being placed in like a medical facility as part of a study. These things I feel like always would impact the final results. So one of the more robust studies that I want to mention uh, from the BMJ examined dietary records of more than 100,000 French adults over a five year time period. I like the study that it captures not only a longer time frame, but also a larger group of subjects to review. It was done with dietary records. So, I mean, that's only as good as the information that's inputted, but still what they found was those who consume more ultra processed foods had higher risk of cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease, and cerebrovascular disease. Um, these results remain statistically significant even after the researchers adjusted for the nutrition quality of the diet, things like saturated fat, sodium, sugar, and fiber. Um, and this one does note that even though, you know, it's a large observational study, it doesn't prove cause and effect, but it did show some associations between a diet higher in ultra processed foods leading to things like risk of heart disease and other diseases. It's actually quite a bit of research out there. Once you got looking, I can't find the study I had pulled up right now, but there is a lot of research done looking at the risk of ultra processed diets and risk of certain types of cancer. As we know, we still can't point the finger to one thing that causes all cancers or any specific type of cancer, but I think we do know enough now based on the research that these higher processed diets, maybe higher inflammatory diets can lend themselves to cancer risk. And I know you guys do want a video on anti-inflammatory diets and if there's any validity to that. So make sure you thumbs up this video and I will plan to hopefully do that in the near future here. So with cancer risk, there was a 2018 study done, found a 10% increased risk in ultra processed food intake with risk of breast cancer and just cancer overall. Let's see, there was another one done showing a link between higher fasting glucose levels, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular risk factors, and risk of hypertension. So again, even though these studies can't actually establish causality in that it's cause equals effect, um, it does, tell us that there are some links here and that we clearly need some more research on, on these processed foods in our diet. You may have heard the term before that we live in obesogenic society uh, where highly palatable food is just so easily accessible, right? And I think that's something we have to acknowledge. We're not living in caveman times anymore. There is a lot of highly palatable food uh, 
for most of us at an arm's reach, right? Like anywhere you go. So the temptation is there and it's just more accessible. So I think it's important to keep that in mind too when you think, you know, it's just lack of self-discipline. That's not always the case, right? Oftentimes it's not always the case. It's what's so frequently available for us. With keeping all of this in mind, what is my stance on all this? If you guys don't already know, I obviously preach getting as much whole food in the diet as possible, but understanding that it's just not always gonna be practical to have a 100% whole food diet. Number one, not all of us can afford only getting whole foods. Things like organic fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables, comparative to things that have been a bit more processed, just they're more expensive. It is what it is. That's wherever you go. You can try to shop locally or seasonally based on where you live, hitting up farmer's markets, things like that. Things may be a bit more affordable, but not everyone has the privilege to be able to afford a whole food diet. That's just not realistic. Number two, time. Like the time it takes to eat and prepare a whole food diet is more time consuming. So I know for myself, oftentimes I may choose things that are processed, sometimes even ultra processed. I sometimes dabble with the deli meats. I try not to make it a habit, but on occasion I have them on hand because I know there's gonna be situations where I am in such a time crunch that I'd at least rather have something that quick that I could grab to make a quick sandwich or a wrap or throw it in a salad and get a protein source versus setting myself up to fail and potentially falling even further down the deep end of making bad choices. So I think you have to be realistic with your lifestyle and you know finding ways that you can still get in whole foods and have them hopefully be the majority of your diet if you're able to. The convenience factor, we all need it. I think many of us are very, very busy in today's day and age. So sometimes having the convenience for me Personally, I know sometimes when I've done my grocery hauls on here, I've gotten crap that I buy a lot of things in bags and look, I get it. And I do and am always trying to be a bit better about buying things in their natural state. But sometimes I do still grab things like my shredded Brussels sprouts that are already shredded for me and in a bag because I know if I buy the whole Brussels sprouts, my lazy butt is not going to clean them properly, shred them up and do all that extra work to get them in the oven versus if they're already a bit processed for me. So sometimes you just have to be realistic with the convenience factor. If it's gonna make or break the difference of you guys eating fruits and vegetables, then don't sweat it so much. For the most part, I would just say, thinking about your diet as a whole, are there any areas where you can reduce the foods that are processed and maybe find ways to incorporate more whole foods into your diet that work within your lifestyle? Sometimes that's where working with a registered dietitian such as myself can help you out with finding some of those small tweaks that are realistic for your lifestyle. I would say that it's safe to say for our health, it's gonna be bad to minimize the processed foods in our diet as much as possible. But also my hope with going through this video is that it gave you guys a little bit more information on the differences between processed foods, being careful about the language you use, not demonizing the term process as a whole, but more so taking a finer look at the ultra processed foods that may be coming into your diet and see where you can maybe minimize these and make some healthier substitutions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. As always, if you have some burning topics that you want discussed, feel free to comment those down below. You guys can always shoot me an email or a DM, take a little video of yourself, or just write it all out, what your question is or what trending topic you would like answered for the possibility of being featured in an upcoming video. Before you head on out of here, make sure that you guys are subscribed to the channel, hit that little post notification bell. That's gonna let you know each and every time that I upload and I will see you guys in the next one.